Today we're joined with Jenny Hatch, Executive Director of the Sierra Nevada Alliance, has been leading conservation work in collaboration with diverse partners for over 20 years. Her career background leading up to this role include uh, work in restoration ecology, conservation biology, horticulture as a master gardener, initiating the aquatic invasive species prevention and control projects of Lake Tahoe, uh, fisheries protection and restoration, and working with recreational interest policy and advocacy. So she has a really amazing, well-balanced, well-rounded background, and she's going to tell you a little bit about the work that she's done. So thank you so much, Jenny, for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, we're really excited to hear your um, discussion. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and let you lead the way. Awesome. Great. Thanks so much. So yeah, um, I'm Jenny Hatch. I'm the executive director of the Sierra Nevada Alliance. And um, I'm going to share a little bit with you today about my background leading up to this point and how I became an executive director of a nonprofit, and then a little bit about the nonprofit that I run. And just sort of my work-life balance. So um, I grew up with a family that was pretty dysfunctional, to be honest. Um, a lot of addiction in my with my parents, um, you know, not good role models, none of that stuff. But I always had a love for animals and nature, um, art, music, um, all those things. And I was lucky to have some like side role, you know, other role models in my life. Um, the reason why I share this is because I didn't get a lot of like financial support um, for my education and, and career. And so I grew up in, in Nevada and in Reno. Um, I also spent some time as, in Arizona as a kid um, in California. Uh, but when I it was time to graduate high school, I did so barely by the skin of my teeth. I was uh, being pretty wild, but still like knew I wanted to go uh, to college, but didn't do like any tests or anything. SATs, none of that. When I was in college, I was or in high school, I was not very motivated. Um, but then something switched. I think I had some good examples of other people and uh, a life I wanted to live and. I, I went to the local community college first and then did two years of that and then went to the University of Nevada, Reno. And lucky for me that my state school had a really strong natural resources department. At first, I wanted to be a veterinarian and I was working at a vet hospital as a tech. Um, and then I realized that that wasn't like really where I, I wanted to be just because of the work life balance with that. And so I went into conservation biology. So I got a degree in conservation biology from the University of Nevada. Um, and it was like in 2001, so a while ago now, over 20 years. And I paid my whole way, you know, and got Pell Grants uh, and studied hard and had to really shift um, it to become a better student and um, just had a why, basically. Um, and, you know, wasn't like the best test taker or anything, but studied hard and did well and got through it. And then I started in AmeriCorps uh, before I graduated as I was like a student senior in college um, with the Nevada Conservation Corps and the Great Basin Institute, and um, also had a really great mentor in uh, Jerry Keir, who's their um, executive director still and founder, and he took me under his wing, and AmeriCorps was <clears throat> really fantastic for me. Um, I served with Douglas County Parks and Rec, and then I served with Washoe Story Conservation District, and uh, was lucky that I got hired on as their watershed coordinator after my terms of service um, with the Washoe Story Conservation District right after college. Um, so right away I had a job in the field as a watershed coordinator, which was a pretty big job right out of college. And I think it just had to do with the existing watershed coordinator um, at the time, went to the state and um, they were sort of without any, you know, any like any staff with any kind of real experience. And they were like, well, you're the best we got. So luck was on my side <laughs> and a little bit of hard work. Um, but I worked there for a while and enjoyed that job and did some, you know, coordination of restoration projects and monitoring projects. And then um, from there, I wanted to move up to Lake Tahoe and uh, I got a, a seasonal job, wildlife job with the Forest Service. And then after that summer, I got hired on by the Tahoe Resource Conservation District and was working in their erosion control program, and then got promoted to a program manager position to lead their invasive species program, 
where that was one of my um, proudest career accomplishments. And during that time, I started the invasive species program at Lake Tahoe, which has really changed the culture of um, boat inspections and all that kind of stuff in Lake Tahoe and has really helped the lake. So that was a, a big accomplishment. Did that for a few years. And then after that, I got hired on by California Trout, a state conservation organization, nonprofit, um, and was their Northern Sierra Regional Director uh, and did fisheries work, which I found a love for fisheries, learned to fly fish in that job. Um, and then um, moved on and was a contract executive director for this year at Avalanche Center. And this was all around the, at the end of my time with California Trout. And then transitioning in to um, Sierra Avalanche Center was when I had my first child, my son, Carson, who's now 10. Um, so I was, you know, some of those transitions are related to, you know, working less and just lifestyle balance and having a baby. And then two years later, I had my daughter, Evelyn. Um, and then I, well, she was just about a year old or so. I started, I got hired on as the executive director for the Sierra Nevada Alliance. So that was six years ago, six and a half years ago. Um, and, uh, that was, I just, you know, throughout my career path that I just expressed to you of, of being an AmeriCorps member. And then throughout that, every job I've had basically since then, I have seen the value in AmeriCorps and, and in service and how it really helped me kickstart my career. And um, so I had, I was a host site for AmeriCorps members since then and a supervisor for host site uh, or for AmeriCorps members through Great Basin Institute and the Sierra Nevada Alliance. And when the Sierra Nevada Alliance was hiring um, new executive director, I put my hat in the ring for that because I was passionate about the fact that they managed an AmeriCorps program for the whole Sierra Nevada and um, wanted that program to succeed. And so, uh, yeah, I got, I was lucky. I got that job when my daughter was about a year old. And then since then I had my third child <laughs> and I'm done. Um, and he is three and a half and his name's Asher. So um, that's been sort of my career path. Um, and here are my three kids <laughs> in a pretty recent photo uh, this last December. Um, and they're adorable, but they're a lot of work and they're a handful and they keep me busy. And it is definitely challenging to um, be a mom and, and not just, you know, I'm an active mom. I have that service ethic. So it's like I volunteer on the PTA and I'm on board of directors and uh, for their schools and I volunteer and I participate. Plus they have all their extracurricular activity and their busy schedules and all the things I'm um, doing all of that um, and running this organization is no easy feat. Um, but it is, you know, I'm passionate about it. And, you know, I think the most important thing is to really take care of yourself. So you have the energy to do all of it. Um, so uh, the Sierra Nevada Alliance organization that I run is an, a nonprofit that's been around for 29 years. Um, like I said, I've been the executive director for six. And um, partner with and respect the executive directors before my time. The organization had a four year gap of interim leadership where it almost died prior to me being the ED. And so I definitely have been on the rebuild and grow mode of the organization. Um, so that's been a fun challenge. And I think we're, you know, I don't say we're out of the woods, but we're doing pretty great work right now and, and things are going pretty well. Uh, our geographic boundary, is the whole entire Sierra Nevada. So the whole 400 mile mountain range, um, it goes all the way up to the Cascades, all the way down past Bishop and Visalia, both sides, California and Nevada. Our purpose is um, to elevate and support Sierra ecosystems and communities. Our mission is that we're a hub for stewardship of the Sierra Nevada and we achieve that by empowering and collaborating uh, with our partners. Uh, we're a member group organization of co the conservation organizations and nonprofits actually pay dues to be a member. And we provide services to them. And then we have deep collaborations of cons conservation implementation that we do. And I'll share a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, our vision is really a thriving Sierra with Sierra, thriving ecosystems and communities that are resilient and cared for for multiple generations. Um, and a little bit about our history. 
We were formed in 1993. There was um, a Pulitzer Prize article in the Sacramento Bee that was published um, called The Sierra Now. And it was um, an article that chronicled and kind of expressed the dire need that the Sierra Nevada had, its importance and its need for conservation and protection. They convened a conference, um, Environment Now and some other organizations convened a conference. And out of that conference came the Sierra Nevada Alliance as an organization. And you can kind of read these points. That's to really be like a unifying organization um, and to unify the voice of, for and um, of the Sierra Nevada. And so that's really a big part of what we do. Um, and again, so our main programs right now are, um, we've run this AmeriCorps program that I shared with you guys that I'm passionate about for 18 years, um, this year in Nevada AmeriCorps partnership. Um, and that program really does a lot of watershed health work, restoration, monitoring, environmental education, um, and volunteer recruitment. Uh, we place about 32 volunteer members every year. They're not volunteer, they get paid. They have a living allowance and a stipend, but we place them with about you know, over 20 conservation organizations all over the Sierra. So we really have, you know, 30 some 50, or actually like 50, when you look at all our programs, like about 50 employees all over the Sierra working with all the different conservation organizations um, through that and other programs. Um, community engagement, that's just a lot of our outreach, our development program. Um, we're in the process of launching a new website for the Sierra that's um, a visitor portal. Um, that's an example of something we do in community engagement. Um, and our member group program for conservation organizations is in there. So it's like we have a conference for them. We put on webinars every month um, or we have a job board. We have our website is really this resource and hub for all things here in Nevada. Uh, climate resiliency program that's um, been really working with jurisdictions on 100 percent renewable resolutions and um, climate action planning to get to those resolutions. And then we have a forestry program and we have a workforce development program within that um, forestry fellows uh, who are hired staff and similar to AmeriCorps, they're placed with different private and um, nonprofit organization and agency partners um, to get trained as leaders in the forestry field while increasing <coughs> capacity for forestry work. Um, that program for example, our forestry fellows uh, raised $10 million in grant writing uh, for forestry projects next um, last year for the future this year. <laughs> and then advocacy, um, we're just involved in all sorts of advocacy for this year um, to really um, promote proper um, protection and funding and um, collaboration with that. We just hired an organizer for the governor's 30 by 30 initiative to conserve 30% of California's land uh, by 2030. And our organizer is um, doing engagement and prioritization of projects and lands uh, for that initiative um, in the Sierra Nevada. So we do a lot. It's really hard to explain who we are often. We're really trying to always improve our storytelling because we do so much in such a large uh, landscape. So um, this slide kind of articulates some of our accomplishments last year um, that you can kind of read and see um, just our conservation impact with some of our programs last year. And I think what's really important to highlight is this was during COVID uh, when we weren't able to do, I mean, COVID's still going on, but in the higher part of COVID when we weren't able to get out and do as much. Um, so proud of that. And again, here are our programs and some of the things that they've done. Um, the guy in the wheelbarrow was actually one of my AmeriCorps member when I worked at Caltrout, I was his supervisor before I worked at the Sierra Nevada Alliance. And he's gone on to have a really fruitful career. Something really proud about is how AmeriCorps and our workforce development programs really create um, conservation leaders. Um, and we've had some of them as our board of directors and gone on to work for Department of Conservation and just really large scale um, roles nationally. So we're proud of that. And here's again, our forestry work happening in the field. 
something I'm really proud about also with our forestry program is that we work with, um, and AmeriCorps, we have tribal partners, tribal communities um, that we are also doing workforce development with. And this picture here, um, the guy getting interviewed is Thurman, um, who was one of our former Washoe uh, tribal member employees. And then um, again, you know, our member group program, we have on our website, um, a conservation directory of all the conservation organizations. We do uh, monthly newsletters, so you can subscribe to that and get um, a real good summary of like everything that's happening in the Sierra, all the events, advocacy efforts. There's a job board. Um, it's just a really great way to have everything in one place and get um, up to date. And those are our other programs. Here's a little bit about that Take Care campaign that I mentioned. Um, we bought graphics basically from the Take Care Tahoe uh, campaign and are expanding that across this era, um, really to engage diverse stewardship and participation. And so that's a little bit about me and a little bit about the work that we do. So I'm happy to answer some questions and elaborate. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. A lot of different things, huh? <laughs> we do. We are involved in a lot of different things. When you're trying to um, protect an entire mountain range, there's a lot of different <laughs> uh, conservation topics and issues that you have to work with. So. Um, so in that realm, you know, you are working with mountains. So what do you think would be the most challenging part of your job? What is the most challenging part of my job? Um, I think it's being resilient. Um, and I think that my, I was actually talking to two of my supervisors or directors about this yesterday, uh, because they got word about a grant they didn't get and, uh, they were bummed. And I, I was telling them that I think one of the things that has really helped me in this role is to be, is the resiliency that I had, like actually my upbringing as a child and having like that be sort of challenging um and some loss that i've had you know i've lost my mom my dad and my brother like my all three of my immediate family members have passed on um at early ages due to like drugs and alcohol and just poor lifestyle choices and you know my life before i met my husband and kind of got into my own adult life was has was really hard and even after that actually because that's when i lost my family but you know that just creates a sense of perspective and resiliency and like as an executive director you're it's always you're riding this roller coaster of highs and lows of you know it's like one day yay we get this big grant the next day oh we didn't get this one or like oh one of my employees like you know is having trouble and i have to deal with that from an administrative hr perspective or um gosh you know there's just there's always drama <laughs> and there's always, and you're stressed out about the budget and like all the things. So I think just trying to be calm through it and like ride the dips to get to the up <laughs> and have that resiliency is, is the hardest part, but in the most important thing or attribute I find um, in being a leader. So, yeah. So, you know, this is gonna be viewed by some students and teachers so if someone wanted to go into a career like yours or go work for the Sierra Nevada Alliance, what, what advice would you give them? Well, gosh, so much to say about that. I feel that, you know, first of all, it is, you know, subscribe to our job board. That would be a first important thing to do. Make sure you're subscribed to our job board so you can see our jobs and all the jobs that are happening across the range. And then, um, you know, secondly, uh, I think, I don't know, this is hard to say in a sensitive way, but I just feel like I've noticed that people coming out of college don't seem to have the service ethic right now or the willingness to take. I mean, I know like BIPOC communities aren't able to take less pay, but um, and we're working to increase the wage. But I'm also noticing that people are not applying for AmeriCorps like they used to. And I just that worries me that our service ethic isn't as high as it used to be. And people just come out of college or high school and they think that they can, um, you know, be like making a hundred grand. And, you know, that's having that internship and tutorial like kind of support is a really important part of career development out of college. And so I think 
people should be more receptive and open to that um, versus, and, and maybe if they can, if they're in a position where they could take a little bit less pay um, or, you know, definitely from the high up with Cal volunteers and the national corporation for public service, I know they're really working on increasing the pay right now, but um, yeah, I just, I don't know. That's something that's really like on my mind and my heart that I'm like, we have all these, positions open for like six months service positions and we're getting like no applicants. And so there's just something really strange happening in terms of like workforce right now and people being able or willing who would normally have applied for those kinds of positions before not applying for them. So uh, be more open to service, have a service ethic and um, you'll get a lot out of it. It will really like doing service and something like AmeriCorps or Peace Corps is a lot more than just a higher paid job is going to get you, I think, in the long term. So, yes. All right. So conservation challenges can seem daunting or large scale. Um, so what are some things that students can do to make an impact? I think it's really, it feels really fulfilling and satisfying to work at the local level. Um, you can really start, you can really see changes happening um, much more tangibly. And those local changes actually really make a big difference. Like I just think about the climate work that I've done and we've done um, with the different communities in the Sierra, South Lake Tahoe and Truckee and Nevada City and, you know, working with on a, like a relationship basis, it's easier. You can form those relationships, you can get resolutions passed, and you can affect how like the local level is, you know, making a climate action plan and making changes in those local governments. And then cumulatively, you know, if the more you do things like that, then it, and you show that as a pilot or an example, and then that's cumulative, then it makes a really big difference. You know, um, I think, you know, especially with something like climate change, it feels really daunting. And I've found that that is the best way to really feel like you're making an impact. So, yeah. Awesome. So I think those are all the questions we had. I just really wanted to thank you for joining us and taking time to film with us today.